So we're talking a little bit about gun control and how a lot of a lot of these school shootings. You can't believe everything you, you hear and see right. in the news, but we let, let's take Uvalde. Uh, where in the world did he get the money for all those weapons? Where, you know, and, and I know in a lot of the shootings, they were guns that belonged to the parents. Right. And parents, we have to do a good job of keeping your guns yeah. locked up. Yeah. Um, you know, I uh, I catch a, a lot of slack for this, um, but I don't care. Um, I just don't care. Like I tell people all the time, yes, I'm conservative, but before I'm a Republican or before I'm a Democrat, I am just an American. And that's the way that it should be. We are Americans before we're anything, right? And so what's, what's that mean? It means that we put that before being a Republican or a Democrat. And so well, where, where am I going with this? Why is that right? becoming more and more impossible in this political climate? Because we have a political climate that that encourages division. That's the truth. It comes from our leaders. It comes from our leaders. Um, you know, love or hate um, Barack Obama. Uh, I served under him. I, as a Republican or as a conservative, I love him. I liked him a lot. Um, I didn't agree with all of his policies, um, but I didn't agree with all of Trump's policies or Bush's policies or Biden's policies. We're not going to agree on everything, even with our allies, right? Um, but we must put that we're Americans first yeah. before a, a party. But we know that that's not the political climate in which we live, right? Because we keep electing people that don't live like us, David. We're not electing the normal day-to-day -day guy, right? Like, I was pretty happy to see uh, Morgan Luttrell um, elected to Congress here lately. Um, I, I don't personally know the Latrells. We went to college together. They were in a different fraternity that I was in at the time. Um, I knew of them, um, but I know their story uh, just through Marcus's book, Lone Survivor. Um, I know that they came from humble beginnings. Um, those are the people that we need to be electing. You know, these guys like Joe Biden, and I'm just using him for an example or as an example, 50 years in office, our forefathers never, ever intended for people to serve for 50 years. Make a career out of it. You become, I don't even, how, you become, your, I want to say irrelevant, but your policies become irrelevant. You can no longer relate to the average American, Right. And so we talk about term limits. We absolutely need term limits. You know, I'm hoping that Ted Cruz does the right thing because he's one of the ones that's been pushing for term limits. But yet, I mean, he's been in office for a little while. So, Ted, I mean, you know, at some point you're going to have to pay the piper and step down. You're the one pushing for term limits. I think he's on his second term. Hey, at some point you're going to have to step down or run for a higher office, you know, being, a, being the president or whatnot. Um, but you know, we kind of got way off into the weeds, but let me, let me dial it back in. We're talking about gun control, right? Here's the reality. We have to do better as Americans. Yes. I'm a second amendment advocate. I absolutely believe in the second amendment. I know that the foreign governments would never, ever try to take the United States on foot because they know that its citizenry has a has over 400 million weapons and we would slaughter their soldiers on the battlefield or on in the streets of America. Right. Um, so the second amendment works in our favor there, but where it does not work in our favor is that we allow people to purchase guns that should not purchase guns. We allow people that are mentally unstable to purchase weapons that should not purchase weapons. We allow 18 year olds to purchase AR 15s when we argue that they can't purchase a Glock 19 or purchase a 12 ounce beer from a convenience store because it clouds their judgment. How does that make sense? How can any politician articulate that we don't need to change that law 
to where an 18 year old can't purchase a weapon until they're 21, just like as if it were a pistol. Yeah. I mean, help me make that make sense because it makes no sense to me. It, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense at all. No, I mean, but you know, you have those hard line people on both sides. You have one side that say we should take away all guns or limit them, like some European countries to just hunting and whatnot. Um, and that's not the answer because we know we're living in an ever violent society. People need and have a right to defend themselves. Again, goes back to the Second Amendment. But then you have the far right saying, you know, they don't really want to put any stipulations or the NRA put any stipulations on people that have had, uh, you know, some type of significant mental health trauma or crisis in their life and have a vetting process to be able to determine whether that individual is stable enough to, to own a weapon or possess a weapon. Then you have the component where it factors back into what we're talking about now is violence in schools and in our shopping centers and our grocery stores uh, that's carried out by people that have purchased these weapons uh, legally, primarily they're legally, um, or they get them from a trusted individual like a parent. And so, you know, there has to be consequences. As a Second Amendment advocate, as a avid hunter, as a, a, a owner of at least two dozen, three dozen guns, um, I have no problem that accepting that if I have a weapon and I don't control that weapon and you know, make sure that that weapon is secured and a kid gets it, gets it to harm themselves or others, I have no problem with me being charged with a felony. Because those that argue that that should not happen, they're, they're counter, you know, they're contradicting what we should do as responsible gun owners. So, you know, why is it in the state of Texas only a misdemeanor if a child gets a hold of a weapon and hurts themselves? Why is that? Why is Republicans fighting changing that law to making that a felony? So that's what parents need to start doing. That's what our citizens need to start doing. Common sense gun laws. This is a problem in the United States of America. You yeah, know, it's, and, and and it's every time you turn the news on now. Yeah, it's, it's there's there's a new shooting. There's probably some that don't even make the news anymore. Right now, I'll get you a calendar. Seven days. Go seven days without writing down an incident that you've heard of on the news that involves a gun. You can't. You can't do it. You know, um, and people are going to say, oh, Mike's anti-gun. I'm not anti-gun at all. I am pro-common sense. We can't fix these problems that we're seeing in our society if we're not honest. If we let politics continue to drive government is the answer. Government is absolutely not the answer. I get asked this question all the time. How do we resolve these things, Mike? Well, we got to get real with ourselves. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is that people, Americans, Texans, don't wait on legislators to resolve your problems. Because just like I was telling you about SB 11 in 2019, when I let, you know, had multiple testimonies and helped draft that, um, that current security bill for the state of Texas uh, for schools, it got watered down into politics. It is not the bill that we intended. Perfect example is we, we put in there and the intent was that school districts couldn't conduct their own audits for integrity issues. It's like grading your own paper. Well, shit, every time I'm going to get an A. <laughs> right. You know what Absolutely. I'm saying? I'm going to get an A, you know? Uh, but that got watered down. And now school districts can conduct their own audits, um, which is why we saw after Uvalde, 67 had, you know, submitted a legitimate emergency operations plan, and only 200 out of 1,022 had um, even submitted their audits or conducted their audits because what our government's good at, and this is why I say don't wait on them, they're good at making laws. There's there's not any follow-up to the process and how we're going to regulate those laws. It's like, here's the law, okay, on to the next. Yeah. So where's the accountability, the OG accountability podcast? Where is the accountability in governance? There rarely is any. 
And so what I tell people all the time, do not wait. Do not wait for your politicians or your school district to, to give you the answers. Seek them yourself. Seek the answers yourself. Put pressure on those people who have either been elected or hired to keep your kids safe or keep you safe at work. Ask them the hard questions. Be the thorn in their sides. Demand accountability. And don't fall for lip service because the majority of them giving you the lip service, they don't know a damn thing about how to keep people safe. The greatest, and they're not qualified. The greatest advocate that your kid has is you. Is you. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. I always talk about that. Empowering the people, right? The power in this country resides in the middle. Not the far left, 15% or 20%, or far right, 15 or 20%. It's that 60 to 70% in the middle that really don't give a damn about politics. We just want to live a comfortable life, raise our kids, be left alone, make our decisions, be free, have some financial independence and stability. We want it easy. Good health. Yeah, we just want to be left alone. Yeah. But that is where the power lies in this country. And if we ever realize that, we will drown out the loud voices of the agitators and the unrealistic on both sides. And that's the facts. We, we had a gentleman on here who authored a book, uh, Truth, The Lies We've Been Told. Mm -hmm. If people could get a hold of the truth and unadulterated truth. Leave your feelings out of it. Yeah. Because that's a problem we've gotten into as a society is our feelings dictate our truth. Mm -hmm. However we feel, whether that may not be the case or not, we've raised a generation of people that think, well, I feel this way, so that's the way it is. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I can't remember the um, the uh, news reporter, but he went and I, I, you probably don't remember that he went and shot the AR-15 and oh, he yeah. had PTSD, PTSD after, 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 shooting. after shooting. And there will be, let's say that broadcast went out to, <laughs> let's say that broadcast went out to 30 million people and 10% um, believed what this guy was talking about. So now we have 3 million uninformed people mm -hmm. about a weapon mm -hmm. that's not as much more powerful than a 20, it's a glorified 22. Yeah. But I, I get my information and it's not correct. He who controls your information controls you. 100%. The voices, the voices that you listen to, that you let pour into your life, if they don't have any merit, they haven't been vetted, mm -hmm. be careful who you listen to. Well, I, and, and, and understand that you have a brain that God gave you. Use it, all right? I had this conversation with a couple gentlemen last week about when I got hired on with the Secret Service. Um, you know, I didn't get hired the first time. <clears throat> and because I was just green, I didn't have a whole lot of experience. And... I'll never forget the individual who told me, hey, listen, uh, you know, you need to stay on top of current events um, and get your sources or get your information from multiple sources. And I said, well, what do, you, what do you mean? He's like, don't just listen to Fox News. Don't listen to CNN, you know, the primary news sources. Look at, you know, uh, unbiased sources like Al Jazeera, um, BBC, Reuters, um, you know, and then compile all that data and then use your own brain to decide, you know, what the facts truly are, you know, and then don't be afraid to dig for those facts, which is why I always talk about parents are the key in this space. You have to ask questions. It's like the train derailment that just happened. The first one in Ohio, uh, there was a, a gentleman um, that was, was on the news. He just happened to be a bystander and they were talking to everybody, but, and they were telling everybody that it was safe. And I love this guy. He's like, the hell it is. They wouldn't be wearing those suits over there yeah. if it was safe. Yeah. <laughs> like, use your brain, people. If it was safe, they'd be out there in shorts yeah. and flip-flops. But no, they're wearing hazmat, full respirator gear. Right. And, I mean, that's because it's unsafe. Yeah. But if you just pay attention to the information you're handing, like, oh, well, it's safe. Everything's good. We've become um, very, I don't even know how to, how to even articulate it, uh, comfortable with just receiving information rather than processing it for ourselves. Like I said, we've got a, we've got a brain that God gave us. Use it. Use Think it. independently. You know, don't just follow the masses. Explore and investigate on your own, you know, rationalize on your own. And so, 
you know, in regards to gun control or gun legislation, I don't even say control, we have to be realistic. We've got to have serious conversations, man, you know, because what we're doing now is not working. Yeah. An all out ban is not going to solve the problem either. It's just going to empower the ones who want to cause and inflict harm to the American public. And, and what we see is evil's evil. Uh, we saw in the uh, Boston Marathon bombing, yep. they use pressure cookers. Yep. Um, people will, if somebody is sadistic enough that they're, they, they want to hurt people, they're going to find a way to Absolutely. do it. Whether it's a vehicle, a weapon, homemade weapon. I mean, evil's evil. And when you get to the point of, of, I'll use the word gun control, I'm with you. I don't like that word. I don't like that word gun control. Um, When you look at the accessibility of getting a, a firearm at the age of 18, no experience in life, you know, and I'm I'm not hitting on younger people, but right. I'm when I was eighteen, you know, yeah. I, I I thought like a a kid. I was a I was a kid, you know, and and I know the government says, well, you're legally adult now. But, no, you're not. No, you're not. I know fifty year olds that still aren't adults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably have a few people who probably yeah. say the same thing about me, but um, but you you look at the types when you can go from a shotgun to an AR-15 and there be no vetting process for either one of them. Mm-hmm. And then to say, well, come back when you're 21 and we'll sell you a pistol. Yeah. There's a big gap, that three-year gap. Where do we get to make guns? And we do realize it, it does start in the home. It, parents, you got to make your guns to where, mm-hmm. when I was in school, I had a friend of mine shot in the shoulder from a guy who got his dad's gun was playing with it, it played with it all the time, was chambering it, dropping the mag, chambering it, you know, over and over again, and then forgot that he didn't discharge the bullet and poof, shot him in the shoulder with a forty-five. Wow. Uh, and, you know, that was in the 90s. The dad didn't even get a slap on the wrist, mm-hmm. you know, because there, there was just no thought of it. Well, I mean, you know, when I was with the Secret Service, um, you know, there was there's a law out uh, that states that if uh, if a federal agent um, <clears throat> makes a weapon accessible to a child and um, you know that child harms himself or somebody else with it um, then that agent is charged with a felony and you lose your job why is that not the same for the general populace of America you know and the, the Second Amendment advocates the NRA folks are going to say Oh, that's that's unconstitutional, you know, bullshit. You're playing political games, right? Uh, it's our kids are dying because of your, you know, politics. Stop it, yeah. stop it. Something needs you to know, be put into place. Absolutely, something needs to be put into place. I mean, if people talk about, you know, going to these gun shows and, you know, I mean, it's just a breeding ground for trading weapons. You know, um, people who go to those gun shows. Sometimes the criminal element does go to those gun shows. They don't purchase, they're not purchasing weapons from the vendor because they know that they can. They can. They're purchasing it from the guy who's walking around with three AR 15s or three shotguns, you know, strapped to his back that have a sign on them that say for sale. You know why? Because they know that they don't have to go through the vetting process that the vendor does. Right? And so have I sold weapons to. I've never sold a weapon to someone I did not know. Never. I've only sold weapons to close friends or law enforcement only. Uh, I don't trust people enough to, if I don't know you, I'm not putting a weapon in your hand. Come on, why would I do that? Yeah. You know, but there are people that do and they have no conscience about it. They don't know where that weapon that they put in that stranger's hand is going to go. And so, you know, I do believe that you have a right to carry a weapon. You don't have a right to independently serve as a weapons dealer. Just because you purchase weapons legally and you want to sell it to someone, you don't have a right to do that. You're you kind know? Of feeding the machine then. You're feeding the machine. Yeah. You know, and they'll be the first ones, you know, grieving when their child is killed in a mass shooting or their, their spouse is killed in a mass shooting. 
you know. But some of these people, you you can't beat it into them. They they're they're just holding on to this narrative that someone's taking away their guns. Trust me, if Barack Obama didn't take our guns away from us, it's probably not going to happen. You know. I think part of that slope that people get into that slippery slope is when you come to gun control it's because of the political arena it is hard to talk about gun gun control because when you do come from the second amendment people from NRA it's like well what's next if we get this established what's next what the comes after can be said about anything though well, exactly. and, know, and that's I mean, the problem with the political climate is everything is politi- politicized to where there's no trust yeah and it you know it's hard it, it, it is difficult to to I, that's like when they came out with red flag laws and people were saying it's not fair because if, if I don't like you I can call on you and and you know say well this guy's you know had problems and have you investigated right and it, it's it's six in one half a dozen in the other yeah and parents if I I say this to everybody even people who don't like guns go get educated about guns how they work how, what, you know what what they're used for the the you know a lot of people don't realize a gun is not just a killing tool yeah it's a tool it's a safety tool it's a tool to put food on the table yeah, but when you get in that thought process all guns are bad all guns are bad and, and I know the AR15 takes a beating mm-hmm. you know from yeah, the news I, I have four of them I yeah love, I, I love I've it got, got you quite know, a few I, I love the weapon itself it's functional um, I like it. Um, you know, but getting back to the political climate, the problem is, is that this is the truth. Neither want to solve the problem. Neither side wants to solve the problem because it takes away their political clout. It takes away that talking point. It takes away that um, political narrative every two to four years that they run their campaign on that puts them into office because the American people are not getting out and voting in masses at the local and state level. Now, when we get a presidential election, of course, they come out in droves. But it's the local and state level that, that, that really where the power lies. And so, you know, I talk about that neither one wants to resolve it. That's the absolute truth. You take, give me a, another, let's talk about, a, okay, let's talk about, let's talk about weapons, okay? So we know that, that neither side really wants to resolve that. You know, two to four years, the Democrats are saying, let's take away guns. Every two to four years, the Republicans are saying, we got to hold on to them. They're trying to take our guns. That rallies the base. That gets people out to vote. Same narrative them. over and over. Right? So let's take another issue. And I'm really going to get into the weeds here. All right? Let's talk about immigration. Neither one want to solve that. They don't want to solve that. Because it, it, it puts people in the ballot box on yeah. both sides. They don't want to resolve it, David. They haven't done anything to resolve it. This could be resolved in a matter of months. You know, and people say, well, what's your solution, Mike? Well, do we have a crisis on the on the southern border? You're damn right we have a crisis on the southern border. Anybody who says that we don't has, ever, has never been there. I work details on the border. We stopped people and apprehended people from coming across in droves, right? Not all of these people are just seeking liberty, but a lot of them are, right? It's just like we have to talk truth, right? America was not just founded by pilgrims, but on the backs of African Americans too. Yeah. Guess what? The Hispanic population is the African American population of 200 years ago. America is being built by Hispanics. You say, well, how do you, what, what do you mean, Mike? Go to any job site here around Houston. Who's your roofers? Who's your framers? Who's your tile guys? Who's your landscapers? Yeah. Right? Absolutely. So the right says we've got to, we've got to basically deport everybody. Bullshit. We don't have the resources to do that. That's another political strategy that they use to put people in the box. The left says people are, are good people. They're all just coming here, you know, to do better. That's bullshit, too. 
There's a lot of truth in that, but we know that that's not right either. And so what I'm telling you is that the reality is, is that we don't have the resources to uh, apprehend every illegal in this country. Um, yeah, who's going to go do it? No one. No yeah. one. We don't have enough people to do that. Right. So that talk is just not reality at all. So what's the solution? Well, we do have to have a way to identify these people. Let's identify them. Let's put together some common sense immigration laws that makes them absorb the American dream of why they came here. The same reason why my ancestors came in here in the late 1800s, early 1900s to flee you know, the Ottoman Empire from Albania to Sicily, Sicily to the United States who sold fruit on the docks of New Orleans to live a better life for their kids who changed their native tongue and didn't speak Italian anymore. They spoke English because they wanted to assimilate to the American culture. So let's do the same thing with the Hispanic population that's coming from the southern border. Let's identify those that are already here. Let's find some type of citizenship path, whether it be green card, whatnot, you know, whatever. Um, and then let's secure the damn border. Let's secure the border. I mean, that that only makes perfect sense to, to, and to think that my parents just got back from Israel. I've been to Israel. Yeah, I like it. I've been there. You, you talk about protected borders. Oh, my God, man. Yeah. You, you're just not coming. You're, you're not, not just you're just not coming in. No. And if you think you are, go to the Lebanon border. Go go with your white flag wave and say, oh, I'm gonna I'm peacefully, I'm coming. No, you're, no, you're not. not. No, you're not. Yeah. 